Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas. In this video, I am going to be showing you how to bend the copper tubing to make a heat exchanger for a water heater like this. Something that can actually fit down inside of the small holes and allow you to either make the solar electric hybrid, whatever, or you can do shapes like this, something for a Fresnel lens to focus on. This is copper tubing you get at Lowe's or Home Depot. It costs about nine to $20 for a 25 foot section depends on which one you get it is for the water inside of your refrigerator if you were to just try to bend this around something you will flatten it kink it whatever there's different methods out there where people have filled it with lead sand all kinds of stuff what we're going to be doing is filling it with water so this is the copper tubing I'm going to measure it out and cut it with a pipe cutter you don't want to just crimp do like a cut it a bad way because you'll end up with a mess. Once you have that removed, you're going to notice I have bolt cutters. You can use a crimping tool, pliers, whatever, but these work really good because they allow you to, and you can crimp the tubing. It closes it, but it doesn't cut through. So it creates a seal. Now that seal might hold, you might get lucky, but I have this cute pink hot glue gun that belongs to my mom. I don't really do much hot gluing, so anyways. This is an electrical device, so be careful with the water, um, which I'll show you in a minute. But first thing that you want to do is submerge this in water and create a siphon, because what that does is that gets all the air out of it, because we need this to be completely filled with water. So this is my clear basin of water. All you do is submerge both ends. So that's what you want right there. Make sure you have a siphon. Cover both ends with your finger, fingers. And make sure it's submerged. So now we have this. The next step is make sure they stay underwater. You wanna take your crimping tool and go about maybe three quarters of an inch down. and do both sides. All right, and you wanna keep it underwater at this point because that is a decent seal, but it's not perfect. So here's where the hot glue comes in and the shock hazard. So, you know, just make sure you're not like grounded and all that stuff. So you wanna just kind of lightly take this, dump the water out of the end and pour some hot glue in that end piece. And then do the same for the other side. And put it back down and you don't need your hot glue anymore. So what this does, this gives you your initial seal, okay? It's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna do any, but if you flip it upside down and no water comes out like that, you're good to go. Now what you do is you come in and you put your real crimp right here. So this plugs it up and prevents it from, if this isn't perfect, it prevents it from like squirting out because you're gonna be putting, water does not compress. And since we're using water to turn, to act as what's inside, well, this is gonna be under a lot of pressure and it'll actually slightly deform the copper, even this process. And I'm just going to grab it by the end. That way I know there's hot glue in there. And I'm going to pinch it. So now what we have is this, but there's hot glue stuffed in there. So any pressure, the hot glue is going to act as a block. And it's really quick. I've seen people do it with solder, solder, whatever you want to call it. That works. Um, but this is a little bit easier than screwing with all that. So we should have... A nice seal and if you think you might have missed it go ahead and give it another extra crimp just to be safe and whatever you do don't be overly aggressive with this because you can actually tear it right there all right so we should have so if you flip it and the water drips out 
you want to get the water off of it but if no water drips out then you know you're good to go and you'll feel that this is colder and it also becomes more difficult to bend so you're gonna figure out about halfway and at this point you can start to straighten this out and if you ever see water dripping out of the ends of these then that means that you messed up so you need to just cut it shorter and repeat the first step that's why I said that you probably want to go with a little bit longer of a piece because worst case scenario is you waste a few cents of copper but you gradually just bend this I'm just gonna use something around this as a broken ratchet so we've got this and then you want to straighten these back out again we're gonna bend this so that way it's not curved all the way around keep in mind I'm gonna show you how to turn this on a pipe and how well it works but this is a much harder thing to do because even with the water in there you can end up with a mess and at this point when it's the size that I know is gonna fit inside the tank I go ahead and start to take these and wrap them now it gets very difficult to turn this as you start to stretch the copper because the water's not compressing in there this gives you a little good strength so that way there's less of a chance that you screw this up and I'm gonna put this in there one more time and just bend it across there like that okay so we've got that set up and we're gonna test it to see if it fits in the tank if you did it right it should just drop right in there now make sure you don't drop it in and lose it because that would suck but see this one hits the bottom of the tank so now what we're gonna do now that we have that is go ahead and just make sure these are nice nice and together the more copper tubing you have in there the more surface area so you could twist this really nice if you want but this is pretty much all you need so I bent that one back and I'm just using the pipe cutting tool okay the first one came off and the fact that no water comes out right now is good that means that it's sealed inside once I cut this the water should just flow right out and there you go now you see the water flowing out so if I if I blow on this one end the water comes out so that means that that water kept this from kinking there and it's not damaged so this is good this would be a good element at this point you want to be careful doing any bending because now you can really damage the pipe now that it or the tubing now that it doesn't have the safety of the water in there but now what we're going to do is put one of these on there the next step would be to put one of these on here this is three quarter inch CPVC it's not regular PVC it's designed for high temperatures for your hot water and this is a pipe threaded piece that slips on there and then on the end is an end cap that I drilled two holes in that this sticks out of so this part is where your hot exchange fluid it could be water it could be whatever goes in and out and transfers the heat through this through the, to the tanks so the tub, tank of water is here I'm going to show you over on this so let's pretend this is the inside of your water tank right here this would sit inside the water of course it would be all the way up here and this would seal off to the top of the tank so your house water pressure is here and this goes in there now this tube your exchange liquid water whatever you decide to use goes through here and it does not drip into your water it just transfers the heat outward so this is sealed however you can see that those leak because these holes they are I think they're five sixteenths of an inch but they're just a little bit bigger to get the pipe through so you've got that going on so you want to fill this end right here with uh, like get some silicone up in there and let it cure you want to make sure you get it all the way up in there if you do the silicone what you want to do is um, as you add it to this end put like a shop vac uh, vacuum hose on this end like wrap these two around and seal it here that way the suction goes through there even though they're tiny little holes and you'll make sure that you get the silicone you actually want to see it start squeezing out this in I'm using a UV cure resin that I've used it's kind of a fiberglass resin in previous videos 
and I have a little MEK, which I'm, I'm not going to put in the syringe now because it would harden the whole thing in a week or whatever. But just to make sure that in case light doesn't get down there, we can get that process going. I'm going to do it two ways. I'm going to put a few drops down there, just like this. And then as I work, I'm going to add it too. So. You just want to go real slow with this so that way you don't create a big air bubble. Now, you don't want to get your silicone and stuff on the threads because then you basically render this use useless. You'll never be able to get it to screw in there. So that should be good. A couple things to keep in mind with the UV cure resins is that you do want to cure it in sunlight or a UV lamp. but you don't want to cure it in sunlight. What do I mean by that? Well, you notice this is in the shade. So as the process starts, you want this to, you can see it's dripping out through the holes, which is good. That's what we wanted. That means that it's all the way down in there. But what you don't want to do is put this right out in direct sunlight because the heat generated from the curing process will create large bubbles and that'll screw you up. So you put it in the shade. It takes about 10, 15 minutes here or even 20. We're going to do other things, let it do its thing. And then when you're sure it's kind of hardened then you move it out to the sun for like an hour and that ensures that it's completely done because this doesn't have surface area to the light like it might get blocked in there that's why I added some of the MEK which will add like maybe cure it in 30 minutes or so if you're looking for a particular shape that's larger there's lots of options out there that are already done on the internet you can find them on eBay people do them for different things this one that has this shape here this goes into the vacuum tubes the um, solar tubes this goes inside of one comes out the other inside of one and comes out the other and this was already done so our curve is a lot tighter than this this would never fit in there you have to really go more aggressive with it you just want to make sure you have good flow through there and you're good what I have over here, this is really interesting. I think I paid 50 or 60 bucks for it. This is um, stainless steel tubing. I believe it's similar to brake line. This is to cool wort or for homemade beer. Oh, there's like something was, I'm gonna let, I'm not gonna show you this until these guys get out of there. Somebody made a nest. Oh, he's hissing at me. Anyways. This um, is a chiller to so you don't to, so you can drop the temperature right away. You run water through there through a water hose. It's got water hose fittings. This is an awesome heat exchanger. In a perfect world, you could just drop this in there, but then you'd have a big ass hole in your tank. So I put a clamp here to hold it in place. What I found works really good is you get the area that you don't want curved. Use some electric tape. So once you have it about like that. You could clamp it too if you happen to have a really good clamp. My experience with this is when, when it's full of water, it actually takes a lot of force to do this. So I'm just going to slowly go and try to do this as nicely as I can. When it's full of water like this, it doesn't bend anything like it normally does. Come on, man. And you notice no water's dripping out. If you have water dripping out, that means that you're, you've, you screwed up. So you just cut your electric tape off of the carpet knife. I went ahead and bent it back the other way. And look at that. That's pretty good. That's the second time that I've done it. And this is still completely full of water. So now we can, we've got something that we can run our hose through in both directions, or this could sit down inside of something. 
gonna give you a close up of it. So that's what I just made. And you can see that there's no water dripping out. So you just, the hot glue acts as a plug and enables you to do this. Look how pretty that is. You try and do that without water and you're gonna have a mess. Or if you use one of those pipe bending, tube bending things, forget about it. Best way to do it, fill it with water, plug them with hot glue, takes no time to set up. You just need a preferably pink hot glue gun. Just kidding, but it worked great. Now that you know how to create this, the next video I am gonna be explaining water heaters, the heating elements, coming up with a way to show you how to convert it to a solar electric or just solar all by itself, and also go over some options for hurricane preps. There's some ways to heat water that you never even thought of. This is the easy way to bend copper. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our video.